Greetings YouTube, Skill Incarnate back with the second part of our Let's Play Xeno Nord series. This was requested by one of my viewers and I had such fun in the last episode we were going to continue our run of Xeno Nords. Now to catch you up, those who haven't seen the first episode, we successfully shot down our first alien spacecraft. We assaulted it and we managed to kill the crew. And we've also gathered some alien technology which we're going to research. I'm going to show you that in a moment. But first of all, I, uh, as requested, have named our soldiers. We now have, of course, Russell Graham, our MVP from the last episode. He took down a few aliens with his trusty shotgun. We have me. Uh, I, I didn't really do that much with the sniper rifle. I, uh, I'm hoping to, to get a couple more kills. We have a new soldier, Corporal Dexter. And I'm sorry, Dexter. Uh, unfortunately, you were stuck with a female soldier. I can't. I don't seem to be able to change their details, or I haven't been able to find a way to do that yet. We have our most uh, amusing named soldier. Plainy McPlain face. And I thought I'd throw him in. True Potato. It isn't a Let's Play series unless we've got him in here. Again, I'm sorry True Potato. You are a female. That's just the luck of the draw. And after much bugging, Mr. Bobbles is in this as well. It wouldn't be a, a co-op game without Mr. Bobbles. So with our soldiers, we've still got two, two slots left. So if anybody wants to add uh, add their name in the comments, I'll uh, I'll add you into the series as well. Now moving on, we don't really have much more. We we can't build anything yet because we haven't researched anything to uh, anything to build anything new. We do have some alien alloys. We'll be able to use those later once we've researched them. And we have unlocked some new research options. So we can now we can now add some more things into our research queue. Now I've done that. You can see we've got an alien plasma rifle queued up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the Alien Alloys project up because I believe that will let us that'll let us build some new armor. The Alien Alloys, uh, that's their metal. We can we can build some more armor. So let's let's uh, see if we can find another alien spacecraft. Speed time up a little bit. Now, this circular area is the area where our radar can detect aliens. Ah, and we've now completed our first research project. So, you've already noticed we're being invaded, Commander, so I won't state the obvious. The situation is bleak. None of the major powers are able to defend their own airspace, let alone protect the rest of the planet. It seems things are up to us. My team stand ready to help. There may only be a handful of us, but some of the finest minds on the planet are at work. So they're working for us in the labs. This organization offers a certain freedom from intrusion that appeals to those of intelligence. The key to beating our enemies is to understand them. We are keen to study an extraterrestrial equipment now, any extraterrestrial equipment you can recover from the battlefield. In the meantime, we've been gathering intelligence on the size and composition of the alien fleet orbiting our planet. Mostly images and data obtained from orbital satellites or ground-based observatories. Given the dis depressingly disjointed response from the rest of the planet, this is probably the most in-depth study of the invasion to date. We've identified over 3,000 separate UFOs in orbit around the planet, with several times that amount of additional probable signals. The fleet is comp comprised of a craft of various sizes, 
The UFOs already sighted entering our atmosphere represent the smallest signatures. But the large signals appear to be enormous warships with dimensions rivaling that of modern aircraft carriers. A glimmer of hope remains. The alien craft seem poorly suited to atmospheric flight. Our interceptors may enjoy some early success against the superior extraterrestrial vessels due to better adaption to the combat environment. So basically their ships aren't used to flying in atmosphere. This may also explain the appearance of only relatively small craft in the skies above our planet. Our scientists theorize the aliens will have to modify their craft to enter our atmosphere. The larger the craft, the longer they will take. So we have at least a few months, basically. I have two recommendations that we can consider supplementing our existing F-17 Condor with a heavier interceptor capable of carrying more powerful weapons and that we investigate some form of battlefield support to aid our soldiers. Okay. So we've got, we've got two options here. The high speed interceptor and the hunter scout car. So I believe the high speed interceptor is definitely our best bet. So let's get rid of that. Got 10 scientists on that. And alien alloys will be. There we go. So once they finish that, they will continue working on the alien alloys project. Okay. So let's continue and see what we can find. That's going to take us a while. Ah, oh, here we go. So it appears they have uh, done an autopsy on one of the aliens that... I think this is the one that Russell pasted with his shotgun. The Sibylian is a reptilian alien standing roughly 195 centimetres, uh, 6 feet, so pretty big, weighing nearly 200 kilograms, the incredibly dense skeleton of the creature and its tough scaled hide account for some 40%, uh, the remainder being largely muscle and teeth. Whatever environment the civilians involved, evolved in must have been a hostile one. Their physiology is hardly to the point where I struggle to think of a creature capable of killing one. With an inch of scaled hide, these creatures have some inherent protection against ballistic weapons. Beneath the scales is a thick layer of dense muscle and the creature's heavy skeleton, both heavily resistant to damage. Once we abandon our bone saws for an angle grinder, we reveal the creature's internal organs. These were much to be expected, the only major anomaly being the presence of two hearts inside the torso. Presumably one alone could not pump sufficient blood to the beast's body to sustain it. Analysis of civilian blood had some interesting results. Almost 10% of the blood is comprised of a powerful coagulant and unspecialized stem cells. We do not fully understand the implications of this, but it's quite possible that live civilians are capable to rapidly clot wounds and possibly even regenerate damage. Now we noticed that in the last battle. Some consolation, civilians are not perfect soldiers, much like the brutes put down in our engineering department. Their physique belies an undersized brain. Sibian probably has as much understanding of squad tactics as it does the finer points of Shakespeare. They also have weak thermal eyesight giving them slower reflexes and poor accuracy. Although smoke will not hinder their accuracy like it does other aliens. So that's interesting. Smoke will not affect those guys. They will prefer to fight at short range so it will be wise to ensure the opposite occurs. So, uh, here we go, we've got a light, this is the, the ship we shot down. My team has finished preliminary studies on the recovered UFO hull. We have designated it the Light Scout. It's very small compared to some of the orbital signals we've detected, barely more than a probe. It is approximately a dozen meters from nose to tail, comprising a saucer section and two wings, 
filled with what we believe to be sensor equipment. Two small thrusters on the back. The craft does not appear to have a reactor of any kind, instead seeming to draw power from rechargeable capacitors on the wings. It is almost certainly not capable of independent operation. Instead, it would need to be launched from a home vessel at the start of the mission and return there afterwards. It has poor combat performance for such an advanced vessel. It is no match for one of our Condor interceptors. The main weapon is an energy cannon mounted beneath the saucer, which has a relatively low fire speed and shorter range than our Sidewinder missiles. So that's why we were able to take this down so easy. The armored shell is remarkably strong and impressively heat resistant given it's only a few millimeters thick, but it is too thin to offer much protection against modern munitions. Enjoy the gentle introduction while it lasts, Commander. I doubt the larger ships will be easy prey. So, the short version of that is a, a 50 cal is going to tear through this thing. And, and missiles, as long as we stay out of the way and we avoid its plasma weapons, we should be able to take them out pretty easy. So let's continue. We should have another alien craft coming soon. You usually get about two or three, uh, depending uh, in the first month, you get about two or three confirmed uh, confirmed ships in your area. They're probably attacking here around the rest of the world where we don't have bases, but I didn't have the money to build an additional base yet. Now we have got a little bit of money, but you'll probably notice our money's going down. And that's because we have operational expenditure. So obviously we had to pay money for these soldiers. They're scientists, they're not working for nothing. And and we have to keep them paid. Which means we have to we have to do a good job. Our our equipment is also very expensive. We've got the best equipment that's available on Earth. So even in the 1960s, that's uh that's some, some pretty advanced stuff. Let's speed this up a bit more. Okay, looks like, yeah, we can see here there's some UFO sightings to the south. Ah, we have our new plane, the MiG-32 Foxtrot. Uh, this is a deviation of the experimental Soviet MiG-31 Foxhound interceptor. Originally designed to intercept supersonic NATO bombers, the Foxhound has an immense speed and climb rate. We will need to catch fast UFOs and the additional firepower required to deal with heavier alien craft. Uh, naturally, we'll be modifying the Foxhound to make it more effective against extraterrestrial craft, hence the updated Foxtrot designation. The airframe can be reinforced with the same titanium-magnesium alloy that has made our Condors more resistant to alien weapons, while the fuel tanks will be enlarged to increase the range of the interceptor. We will also have to replace some of the avionics. The requirements for intercepting human aircraft and extraterrestrial vessels are rather different. In all, it takes the production time to a, for a Foxtrot up to 40 man days. So this, uh, this is going to take us a, a, another month before we can get it up and running. Once successfully converted, the Foxtrot will be a formidable tool in our battle against the aliens. It has two missile hardpoints under its wings each which can carry either a light missile such as a Sidewinder or a heavy air-to-air -air torpedo uh, such as the Avalanche that can d inflict devastating damage on anything too slow to avoid them. Unfortunately, the Foxtrot does not possess a cannon slot nor the agility to safely perform the evasive roll combat maneuver. It will be defenseless once it's fired both its missiles, easy pickings for alien craft nimble enough to avoid them. So accompany it with more capable dogfighters if the target has an escort. You can begin fabrication of the Foxtrot in our workshops immediately. I would avoid spending too long down, down there. I feel like my IQ drops a dozen points every time I visit our resident ogres. I don't know what it is about these guys with engineers. There seems the scientists and the engineers seem to have a bit of a, uh, a rivalry going. So let's go to the research screen now. 
and I reckon Alien Alloys is our, an expert. Uh, good tip with research in the game: never split it. You want to you want to have all or nothing. You want to get these guys, uh, get them together. Uh, I like to think of this as a, a kind of a scrum. We've got a we've got a you know a very short sprint. These guys are trying to go towards a common goal and get this get a minimum viable product out the door as as soon as possible. So aircraft we can now uh, we can now create a fox trot interceptor 200 grand uh, that's actually not a lot when you think the the modern aircraft are, are millions of dollars we have to remember this is 40 years ago so i'm going to build one of these uh we, yeah we just want the one oh, okay i don't have any hanger hangers available So what we're going to have to do... Oh, no, no, we do. We've got... I think you can't build more than one. That's fine. So we're now building one one of the new interceptors. Let's uh, let's continue. So I feel a lot safer once we've got... Uh, once we've got some bigger fighters and once we've got some proper armor for our soldiers, we'll be able to fight the aliens on a little bit more... a little bit more even ground. You can see the money is uh, is just chugging. We're we're spending a lot of. Uh... Oh wow, that was quick. Let's go have a look. Okay, so this is our our new. I don't know if I can. Oh, can we rename it? We can. I'm going to call it the Goat's Horn. So the goat's horn is, and again, guys, if you want to rename, we've got two other aircraft here. Uh, let me know what you would like to call them. Otherwise, I'm going to think of some names for them. So we've got some hard points. We've got a choice of uh, sidewinder missiles or avalanche torpedoes. These are the big boys. These. So I think we're we'll, we'll keep these guys for now. We don't need these guys are overkill for the ship we're fighting. That's okay. So let, let's continue once again. Ah, here we go. It's go time. Okay, that that looks like a fairly small UFO. So let's uh, let's intercept him. Now I could use the goat's horn, but if I do that, then we could potentially end up blowing the ship to pieces. We want to try and take these ships out with as little damage as we can. So we're going to use our smaller fighters. Let's uh, let's go. He's buggering off now. He knows. He knows what's coming for him. Okay, yeah, he's a small he's a small fighter. Let's do it. So same sort of deal as before, we're going to try and split our forces out. And hopefully he's going to take the bait. Yes, he is. So we can now flank this guy, get in close behind him, and deliver some pain. Nice shot. We took him out first go with our interceptors. Uh, with the with our sidewinder missiles, he's down. So what we'll do is we're going to wait out the night now. Because I don't want to do a night mission. And we'll try and take him out with the ground mission during the day. The Xenonaut team touches down, immediately being attacked by a civilian trying to exit their ship. He's in a very good spot. He's chosen his ambush point carefully and they soon realize that they're in a pretty bad spot here. The only logical choice being to retreat back within the ship and hope that the aliens superior firepower can't reach them for the moment. So bobble moving outside the ship 
he is preparing in case they are attacked from another angle, from the right. Plainy McPlainface moves back against the rear of the ship. Russell Graham does as well. Taking a knee. True Potato unfortunately cannot bring his machine gun to bear. And Skill Incarnate Sniper Rifle is useless because of all the obstructions in the way. The team takes a knee and gets ready, hoping that the alien is stupid and decides to charge them. And with that, they end the turn. The alien does indeed charge. And he did kill someone. It wasn't one of our team. So some, someone else, a civilian or a police officer, has been killed. The alien is now approaching. He's within range. The team move up. And open fire. Shield soaks up the first shot, thankfully. Hugo Dubois moves up. 20% chance to hit. That's not good. Not good. He missed with all of his shots. Not looking good for the team. Low chance to hit with everybody. We're going to try and take a knee and see if that, that will increase the chance to hit. Unfortunately, nothing seems to be working. Maybe a hand grenade will do the trick. We can't do that. Whoa, Skill Incarnate hits the alien right in the skull. Not enough to kill it, though. These guys are very tough. Bobble unfortunately can't hit him, but he can drop his gun and go for a one-handed throw. There we go. So he goes to drop this grenade right on that alien's fat head. Drops it right at his feet. Can't pick his gun up again. So hopefully that will do the trick. And we're going to send him off with a shotgun blast as well. See if we can do some damage here. 19% chance. Russell takes the kill. Shotgun to the face. We Kurt Cobain that guy. He's down. And in turn. Grenade grenade cremates the corpse for us. Okay, so first confirmed kill of the match goes to Russell Graham. Now going by the layout of the level, the Xenonauts guess that the alien craft is somewhere up here. A frontal assault would not be a smart idea, so they begin to flank. Bobble watching the side entrance. Russell Graham moving up as well. The team hasn't taken any losses, but Corporal Dexter's shield did take a pretty big hit. It won't survive a second one. The team need to be careful. Watching the long hallway, the Xenonauts move up. Potato is best suited for the long hallway, or Skill Incarnate with the rifle. The team leave Skill Incarnate to watch the long hallway, to watch their backs, and Hugo Dubois moves up. Potato moving up, 
Heavy machine gun could definitely come in handy in these long hallways. The team's moved up, ready to go. And with that, we end our turn. Alien takes a shot, and thankfully he does not hit anything but air. True Potato moving to safety. The rough location of the alien is known somewhere here. The team moves up, getting ready for an ambush. Skilling Kane could be shot where he is, so he is going to need to move. Back to the ship, where he can do some damage. The Xenonauts carefully check that they are in a good position to be able to fight. In good cover. Looking solid. And with that, they end their turn. Blaster Plasma destroys Dexter's shield and gets him into a state of panic. He can't see where the shot came from. Bobble moves up. He can see where the alien is. And he's not in a good position. The team doesn't have the ability to be able to take him out. Carefully considering their options. Very low chance to hit. The team aren't in the best spot. They can't hit him because he's very close. Taking a risk, we move Bobble back. And go for the machine gun option. Suppression successful. Dexter has panicked. And we weigh up our options carefully, moving Russell around the corner could allow him to get some solid shots off with his shotgun. Leaving the boys where they are, they could take they could potentially take some damage here. Hugo Dubois could potentially get a shot off as well. Carefully looking at the team's composition, I think we're good. We end our turn. Very cleverly, he has not come out to play. And he has probably retreated. No, he hasn't. Russell moves up. Takes a shot. Moves back to cover. Corporal, Corporal Dubois could be in trouble here. And Bobble could potentially get a... It appears that he can't because of the distance. We move up Thomas Cermak. And hope that he can get a hit. No, he can't. So we duck him down and hope the alien will not see him. Another shot from the machine gun. Brutally cuts the alien in half. True Potato playing that machine gun very well. It's lights out for the alien. We have some light injuries. Dexter only took a scratch from that. His shield was shredded, but he does have his pistol. And with that, we end the turn.
It's now time to head towards the alien ship with two confirmed kills. We are ready to move up. Thomas Cermak moves up. Keeping an eye out for threats. Russell Graham proving that his shotgun can take on all comers. We move him up. True Potato watching his ammunition count. Carefully reloads his weapon. Her weapon. <laughs> Sorry Potato. And Bobble moving up as well. Bobble's bravery, very, very notable. He stuck his head out, spotting the alien. Even though he did not get the kill, he definitely was a uh, was a key player in taking him out. Corporal Dexter, we have to watch. He's unfortunately only got a pistol. And skill incarnate, we move back into position to watch the long hallway. Plainy McPlain face moving up. The team's looking pretty confident. They've had two confirmed kills and only the light injuries. On that we end the turn. We're preparing to, tack to stack the team up. Bobble moves up behind the metal garbage bin. Don't seem to be able to do that. Ah, okay, it's because I reserved some of his action points by accident. That's okay. True Potato, we move up as well. That machine gun has definitely been a very, very useful weapon in this battle. We hold on to the action points of Dexter and also Hugo Dubois in case any aliens run out on us. And with that, we end the turn. Russell Graham moves up. Watching the long hallway. Dexter moves up. Plainy McPlainface moves up to stack up on the door. The tension's ratcheting up. It's getting very, very tense now. Two confirmed kills, but we don't know how many more there are. Thomas Cermak moving up. True Potato. Lugging that heavy machine gun, the the weapon that uh, is uh, is definitely going to be the most useful in the coming battle. Skill incarnate, staying where he is, good cover, and potentially a a nice long hallway to do some damage. And on that, we end the turn. Plainy McPlainface kicks down the door. Watching the long hallway, followed by Russell Graham. True Potato moves up. He's getting ready. He's going to be dealing some heavy damage with the machine gun. The goal being to flank the alien ship, which we believe is in this direction here. The rest of the team moves up, being wary of the long street that could potentially, potentially be used as a flanking point. Hugo 
moving up. Thomas staying in position to watch the flank. And Mr. Bobble moving to the other side of the street. Looking good. Skill Incarnate still keeping a careful eye out for alien threats. But he is going to move up a little bit. He has a good eye on the alien ship. And with that, we end our turn. We confirmed at least one alien is still alive within the ship. He triggered the door. He knows that he's, he's potentially going to get reamed by a very angry group of Xenonauts. The team moves up. Using the cover and preparing themselves to attack. Corporal Dexter with his pistol and Hugo sticking together. Only lightly armed. Mr. Bobbles, he makes a run for the long street. He is keeping an eye on this, this whole way along with his, uh, his best pal, Skill Incarnate. Thomas Cermak taking up the rear, watching their flank behind them. And on that, we end the turn. Plainy McPlainface stacks up on the door. Potato stacks up on the door. Russell Graham stacks up on the window keeping an eye on the ship, and they are correct, it is there. There is the target. Thomas Cermak moving up. Dexter moving up. Hugo moving up. Skill Incarnate staying in position for now and ending the turn. Shots go out. Skill Incarnate is under attack. He does the only thing he can. He closes the door. He can't close the door for some reason. Because he seems to have lost the ability to. He retreats. The boys watching out for alien threats. Plainy McFlaneface moves up to the only piece of cover that's available. He watches behind. Potato moving up as well. Ducking down. The Xenonauts didn't mean to do that. <laughs> that was a that was a calculated mistake. Hugo moving up. And Dexter moving up as well. Russell Graham is anxious to get in there with his shotgun. Try and do some damage. Thomas Cermak is remaining back to keep an eye on... On the wall there. Corporal Bobble wisely decides to move himself back around attacking from that angle could leave him in some in some trouble there skill incarnate could potentially be under attack so he decides to remain where he is for the moment hoping that his teammates can come in for him door triggers again True Potato takes the first spot, needing his machine gun. We actually reposition True Potato. Reposition Plainy McPlainface, and we move up our remaining team members. They don't have any cover, unfortunately. 
So we move them up to the car. This is a, a very careful assault. We could, in fact, have several enemies on our back. 17 members with Skill Incarnate carefully waiting behind. The trick to moving, actually, the team has another careful idea. They're going to flank from two directions. They're going to attack the ship rather than trying to attack from one location. They're going to flank and hope that this will do the trick. Skill Incarnate remaining where he is. He's in a pretty bad spot. The other team members are ready to flank when the their team mates get close enough. The alien surprisingly is aware that he's potentially going to be attacked. Team moving up. They're only hoping mass firepower at this stage. Seven teammates ready to do some damage. The team checks their weapons, making sure that they are ready to rock and roll. We end the turn. Thomas Cermak moves up. Facing the spacecraft. Dexter moves up. Bobble moves up. The rest of the team getting into position. Potato moves himself around the corner because he will potentially be popping out for some machine gun love. The team's nearly ready to go. We end our turn. The alien very, very foolishly decides to run out into plain sight and so a machine gun blast nearly tears him in half true potato proving that he can use that machine gun with deadly accuracy we move him back out of the way and we move up Skill Incarnate, who can potentially provide fire support with his sniper rifle and is now not in danger. We end the turn. Thomas Cermak decides to wait while Plainy McPlainface moves up. Russell Graham we decide to move the entire team up and hope that we can get some really good kills here We move the team back. And move the team away. Hopefully, that alien will be stupid enough to attack. We move up our other Xenonauts. Stacked up on this door, we have a good chance of being able to do some really nasty damage to him and we end our turn but before we do Mr. Bobbles moves into position and Skill Incarnate not being able to fire he moves into position as well we end turn another blast but unfortunately for the alien, he is now destroyed, and that is the end of our second mission in Xenonauts. Our overall 
our overall performance excellent our most valuable member potato wielding that machine gun like a scalpel and we can see that we were able to take out four aliens oh, sorry six aliens and we had zero casualties an excellent excellent result for our second mission and an excellent result on our second episode so with that i end the second episode of xenonauts a really really good battle and our first mission with zero casualties i hope you enjoyed the second episode of xenonauts and i hope you'll join me when we come back for a third episode keeping in mind that there are still two slots on the team if you want to have your name entered in Xenonauts and you want to join the team, feel free to let me know and I will include you. Until next time, Skill Incarnate, out. <laughs>